Okay, so there's a lot to cover here for my Torchwood episode 10 review. I'm going to start it off in the, uh, in the only way that I kind of know how and say there's nothing like a good Mexican standoff to end a series. You really didn't know who was going to uh, pull the trigger first on their little bomb. Kind of like uh, season four of Doctor Who at the end or for that. Everyone had their own little doomsday threatening device and it was a Mexican standoff that way. Um, I thought that Torchwood Miracle Day episode 10 gave us a bunch of explosions and gave us uh, one final look at a couple members of the Torchwood team. And I think that the people who had the best monologues were Captain Jack and Gwen. Uh, Gwen, to me, is probably, for me, um, as equally likable as Jack. And the whole time, the only thing that I was thinking while watching this final episode was, please don't have Gwen die, please don't have Gwen die. And then, secondary to that, my second thought was, please don't let Jack die, please don't make Jack die. Um, and I think that's because deep down in my heart, as much griping as I've done about this season of Torchwood Miracle Day, um, I really do love Jack and Gwen as characters, and probably would follow them to the ends of the earth in terms of wherever they would go on their TV series or big screen adventures. I think Oswald Danes was a clever plot device in the beginning, as he was acting as sort of a preacher figure to uh, the masses who were dealing with Miracle Day, but his character never really evolved. We had figured him out as soon as um, Jack had given uh, that monologue to Oswald Danes before he'd gone on stage. He was already solved, and so I felt like his uh, time in the last episode of Torchwood was rendered basically useless, um, and that bothered me on a small level. I think that um, Esther never really gained her ground as a character. Nothing ever really became redeemable about her other than the fact that she always did the right thing, you know, helping her sister who was uh, a house sitter, kind of, like, who was stuck in her house, um, you know, getting those kids in social service protection, um, and then, you know, following Rex like a loyal friend would, even though we all know that Esther had an attraction to Rex that Rex wasn't willing to admit. Now, having said that, I think that, you know, if they kept Esther around, she could have been developed into a stronger character. But as uh, she was, uh, in terms of the way she was written, she was a very weak character, I thought. And the final episode really didn't do her any favors or any justice of any sort. Rex, for all of his brashness, is the most logical member of the Torchwood team. He always has some sort of a plan that will get the Torchwood team out of scrapes, and that's something that they didn't have before in the previous three series. I think he's a valuable asset to the Torchwood team, and his arc of what he had to go through in the final episode was um, uniquely interesting to him because of the way he plans out his operations. I, I, I know that I was completely and totally upset about the fact that um, uh, whatever her name was, the blonde chick that I wanted to get shot in the face for like the last four episodes, Charlotte, I, I, I really think that um, the fact that she was able to get away with bombing the CIA and killing the director and everyone in that room was absolutely stupid. And from that point on, I just wanted her to die. I wanted her to get shot in the face so many times by Jack, by Gwen, by anybody who had a handgun handy. I wanted them to die, them to kill her. I wanted them to kill Charlotte so much uh, because she was doing all the sneaky stuff behind the scenes and I really wanted her to get hers. And when she finally did, it wasn't enough for me. I wanted her to get blasted with a machine gun. That's how much I hated that character, which I guess says something for the strength of that particular actress, to make herself so hated in such a short span of time. Now, um, as for the miracle being resolved, I had no idea that it was going to end the way it did. I thought um, that it was a bit of a cop-out, but, you know, 
Solving science fiction mysteries is never easy, and you have to tip your hat to Russell T. Davies in, in some small form, because if you can write a mystery, climbing out of it is even more intensely difficult. I think that Russell T. Davies is not as strong of a writer as I would like him to be, and that Stephen Moffat could probably solve a nice 10-episode or 5-episode miniseries with Torchwood a lot more succinctly and a lot more uh, in a detailed manner than Russell T. Davies does when he is writing Torchwood. I think that's my problem with the show, is that as many writers as Russell T. Davies decides to bring on, none of them have um, the level of intensity that, that uh, the miniseries Children of Earth did. And while I find that the final episode of Torchwood Miracle Day was a solid ending, it wasn't the ending that I wanted. Um, and I can't really exactly tell you what kind of ending I wanted. I, I just think that the mystery could have been more than a giant hole in space between Buenos Aires and um, Shanghai or wherever it was. I think that um, there could have been a more... Um, frightening antagonist than a giant gap in, in, the, uh, in the earth. I think that there could have been more than, than just the giant gap in the earth causing Miracle Day. I like the idea of the families, but I want to see more of that threat. That's what I was begging for the entire time I was watching Miracle Day. Let me meet a member of the families. I thought that that uh, blonde-haired lady, whose name we never got, I thought she might be a member of the families, but no, it turned out that she was just an associate. And I think that bothered me intensely because I was saying, okay, Russell T. Davies is going to give us a bit of the payoff. He's going to let us meet a member of the family and fig let us figure out what their goals are. Nope. Turns out that blonde lady was just another assistant and the guy in Buenos Aires, same thing. And I think that's what irritated me so much is because I wanted to know more about this evil behind the scenes. I think that's what made the 456 so great. You never saw them, but you knew that they were a legitimate threat. You don't really feel that for the families, and I think that's a very big problem for um, Torchwood as a miniseries for Miracle Day. I think that they could have had a more credible villain had they introduced, you know, uh, sub-members of the families that were kind of acting to pull off the Miracle Day mission, which they really didn't have. They just had people who um, were affected by the miracle and people who were kind of slightly orchestrating things on a very micro level for Miracle Day to occur. And I think that's what bothered me so intensely, is that I wanted a bigger threat, you know, instead of having a member of the family carry all this out, have like a couple smaller set henchmen that are not, that are not connected to, you know, Earth and Earth's doings, be observing everything that's happening in Miracle Day. Have us see them in brief little episodes in like three, seven, and nine, and then show us one of the members of the family in episode 10, or have it be someone we already know. That would work really well, uh, I think, for Torchwood. And I think that's why um, Torchwood Miracle Day Episode 10 really didn't uh, give me the ending I wanted. is because I wanted more depth into the mythology of who these families were. You can't just say that they exist and have one guy with really blue eyes be giving Miss Kitzinger instructions about where she should go next and what she should do. And while we're on the subject of Miss Kitzinger, I think that that character is probably the weakest character in all of Torchwood. I know I said that about Esther, but I think Kitzinger is worse because she's just basically, her character is a flat opportunist. She has no uh, moral code of right and wrong. She's just about, okay, where is the next big thing that I can latch myself onto? For her, that's the families, and she continues to be affected by that and be driven by gaining some sort of power or status. And I think it's the stupidest thing in the world because after almost dying, you know, a couple of times, you think she'd wise up to the fact that the power doesn't really mean that much, but she wants to see what's beyond uh, the pale of being on planet Earth and being a part of planet Earth, and she thinks the families will provide that. Will they? I don't know.
I, I, I don't think that she's a solid character at all. I, I, I understand her purpose, but I don't think she's a good character for Torchwood. Now, the one thing that I want to really discuss uh, slightly more in depth right now is the fact that um, the ending, I finally got to see, you know, Charlotte die like I wanted to when Rex got shot. And we, we all know what happened with the twist earlier in the episode. But surprisingly, while I was watching it, I didn't think about the fact that um, Rex would also inherit um, Jack's ability to regenerate. Uh, having said that, I was really, really exceedingly happy to see him regenerate and stay alive. Because that to me meant, okay, we're not losing every member of the Torchwood team that's vital like last time. We're at least getting to keep one guy. There's at least some bit of a happy ending even if it freaks us all the heck out. And I think uh, Gwen and Jack's reactions were picture perfect, because it was exactly what I was saying in my head. Like, what in the world just happened? How did he regenerate? Oh, that's right, he has Jack's blood, so I'm sure his human blood was converted into a similar blood type as Jack's, which means he's basically immortal. It means we have two immortal men, and that if Torchwood comes back, and I pray that it does, so we can figure out about the families. Uh, you know, Gwen, um, Rex, and Jack will all be doing amazing things uh, for Torchwood. Now, I don't know whether Torchwood will come back, but I know if the ratings are strong enough here in America and in Britain, that, that people won't be able to, you know, say no to another miniseries season of Torchwood. Now to one more smaller point. Will I buy Miracle Day on Blu-ray or DVD when it comes out? You know, I don't think so. I mean, I bought Children of Earth when it came out, and I was really excited to own it. I still have Torchwood Children of Earth somewhere, and I think it's uh, the finest piece of writing Russell T. Davies and his team have ever done. But I don't think Miracle Day provided that same amount of buzz they had two moderately good episodes. Episode um, 7, I believe it was, the one where we, we learned about Jack's past, and episode 10, the finale here, when we finally got all the pieces of the puzzle. But the build-up to figuring out those smaller pieces of the puzzle um, wasn't as exciting or as innovative as I hoped it would be. And the secondary characters involved in Miracle Day didn't intrigue me enough and didn't involve me enough to the point where I would say, okay, I'm definitely going to watch that three or four times over. I would sooner buy Spartacus Gone to the Arena or Spartacus Blood and Sand on Blu-ray than buy Torchwood Miracle Day. And that's not saying that I hate Torchwood or I'm not a fan of Torchwood. It's just the story did not deliver in the ways I hoped it would. It had a solid premise and a solid question to ask what would happen if everybody in the world who was supposed to die lived but it didn't do enough with it i felt i wanted to see more anarchy more chaos about the whole idea of people living instead of dying um but enough about what i thought what did you guys think did you like the finale of torchwood miracle day would you watch another season of torchwood like i would or do you completely want to disinvolve yourself in the series now. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. If you like my video for Torchwood, I'm thinking about doing a Torchwood Redux and going back and starting at the very beginning and reviewing all the old seasons of Torchwood. Let me know what you think of that idea and as always I will continue to review Doctor Who and if there are any other mystery or science fiction shows that you like that you think need notable recognition and you would like me to review, let me know in the comments below. Until then, I will see you guys on Saturday morning when I review the latest episode of Doctor Who, The Girl Who Waited. Bye.